Chapter 10 of A Rebel's Manifesto. <clears throat> I made this video a week and a half, two weeks ago by Kentucky Lake. And uh, I've got a post on YouTube, but you can't listen to it because of the wind noise and it's just awful. And I hate when that happens that, you know, you do a take and... Uh, and it's messed up because of whatever circumstances and you feel like you had the exact things that you wanted to say and it's all for naught in a sense. Nick's working on it. We'll see if that video is better, but right now I'm going to try to capture what I said in that video and just let the Lord kind of work through if there's something else that comes to mind uh, to kind of fill in what I think about this chapter. He ends the chapter with some practical pieces about loneliness. He says, if you're hurting, share with an adult or trusted friend. Uh, number two, focus on building genuine relationships with friends and adults. And then he says, if you are not lonely, reach out to those who are. And all of that is great counsel from Sean. But as I got to thinking about that, I thought about the fact that that I don't know if you're going to agree with this or not, but um, hear me out on this. Um, the fact of the matter is that everybody is lonely. You know, we're all dealing with loneliness. <clears throat> now, let me let me try to fill that in a little bit. What are you doing over there? Got my little buddy sitting out here with me. Um, <clears throat> Why do I say that everybody is lonely? And you probably agree with it, or you don't. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I think scripture bears it out that, uh, you know, as you look specifically at the, the book of Genesis, so much comes from that book, especially the first few chapters that tell us almost everything we need to know about life. <laughs> when God created us, he created us in his image. And chapter one is is that picture of him doing that and that explanation i think chapter two is kind of a uh kind of a backup and a fill in the blanks kind of thing because it specifically talks about god creating man and woman and what that is all about and then chapter three kind of jumps forward even more with how it's all broken <clears throat> chapter one is god creates man and woman in his own image uh, you know, he said, he says, uh, in chapter two, it, it wasn't good for man to be alone. You know, everything else he created was good. He saw that it was good, saw it was good, created these birds, the land, the seas, and all this stuff, and it's all good. And when he creates man, he says, it's good. But then he says, it's not good that, uh, that man is alone. So even before chapter three hits, you've got this this inkling of something that tells you that uh, uh, there's there's this issue of loneliness, or at least this issue that we're not meant to live in that state uh, alone. Uh, we're to have a helper, so to speak, you know, for for man and woman who make that commitment to each other. That's within marriage. And that's clearly in that issue that it, that God is addressing there. But as you think about relational issues, you know, it, it, it just kind of transcends into all that, especially as you think about this fact that, um, well, let me, let, me, let me continue on. You get in chapter three and you see that the relationship that God has with man and woman is broken because of their they're eating of the fruit of the tree there, and uh, and they're kind of hiding each in their own loneliness, where they have um, they're they're hiding from God. And um, <clears throat> as I think about that, you know, then so many blessings and curses kind of come out of that from God, and, and what it means to live in that state uh, where you've made your own choice uh, to sin, to to follow what you find is right and wrong. 
<clears throat> as I think about that, there's a couple quotes, and I'm not going to quote them exactly, but I think it's C.S. Lewis or somebody like C.S. Lewis has said that God, uh, or we are, we are all, we all have a God-shaped hole in us, God-shaped hole in our hearts. And, uh, and I think about that, the truth of that, and it's, and, and how, because of the brokenness of this world, because of the fall, because of our sin, we try to fill that hole with so many other things. And I could just do a video on what those things are that we try to fill our lives with, apart from God, which only God can fill that void, fill that hole. <clears throat> and I should do a video on that someday. But then I think about uh, this this quote, I think it's from Augustine, and paraphrases that, um, you know, we won't find our rest or true rest until we rest in the rest in God. And so one day that is going to be fully realized when we're in heaven. Uh, but even in the here and now, as we think about rest, as we think about contentment, as we think about dealing with our loneliness, we find all these other things to try to deal with that. And it all falls short because of that God-shaped hole in us. But then when we find our rest in God, it, um, it it's not like it erases all the difficulties of our lives or the suffering or the troubles that we go through, but it provides hope. It provides peace. And even Jesus talks about that in, in the Gospels, you know, this, this peace I bring to you, you know, um, don't let your hearts be troubled. Uh, <clears throat> and so as I think about this whole issue of loneliness to kind of circle back around the fact of the matter is everybody is lonely. We're all dealing with something. Now, There, it may be in a matter of degrees. It may be in a matter of quality or even quantity uh, and, and how that is playing out in our lives. And I do agree with Sean that, you know, you, there's, you know, if you're hurting, go to somebody. You know, just don't keep it to yourself because you're just not going to be able to walk through that alone since we are made to be in some kind of relationship with people as God has created us. It wasn't good for a man to be alone, but even more so as you think about God uh, being in our lives, um, you know, we're not, you know, he, he, he created all these God images <laughs> and people that are made in the image of God. And uh, those are gifted people in a variety of ways to help us in the midst of the things that we go through. But then Sean talks about focusing on building genuine friendships with friends and adults. That's real important too. Uh, you know, not just to, to get in our echo chambers of people that are saying things that uh, uh, even increase our level of anxiety and worry and bring us into states of loneliness. Uh, we, have, we need to have some genuine friendships to help kind of press into our issues and our struggles uh, and to help us through that. But then if you're not lonely, reach out to those who are. Well, you know, even Paul says in Second Corinthians chapter 1, you know, this comfort that I've given you, use that comfort to comfort others. The fact of the matter is, is you're in a struggle with everybody else. And so you need to reach out and bring the comfort that you've been comforted with because of your relationship with God. And I think that's, you know, as we circle back in this and think about the fact that everybody is lonely, your struggle and, and how you will work through some of that loneliness is going to be dependent upon how you are, are, are putting people in your life that are encouraging you in your faith, but also the people that you're reaching out to, that you're helping not just a listening ear or a comforting shoulder that somebody can cry on where you're listening and commiserating, but but giving genuine biblical help in those times. Yes, listening is good. Even James says, you know, be quick to listen, slow, uh, uh, 
slow to speak, slow, or yeah, slow to speak and slow to become uh, angry. Uh, you know, the, run to quit, be be go fast to that listening, but in your speech, in your actions, show Christ. You know the pain that you feel when loneliness is ramped up in your life. I'm not saying that there's even a one-to-one -one correspondence with the fact that as you reach out to others and help them in their loneliness and their troubles and suffering or whatever, that it is going to dissipate everything in your life and make you, you know, I'm not asking you to be pragmatic about this necessarily, that uh, you do this and everything's going to be fine. You're, you're still going to be a struggle. And, uh, uh, but this is what God has asked us to do as we deal with the loneliness in our lives that all of us are going through. So there's my encouragement to you. Good chapter in the book of um, a Rebels Manifesto, chapter 10. We're going to keep moving on. And uh, I hope this has been helpful. I hope it had some challenge in it to help you move along uh, in your faith journey. Love you much. Take care. Bye.